Hello and welcome to a new video about hydraulics. This time we are talking about the dimensioning, the sizing, the selection of the tank, hydraulic tank. Okay? Last time we talked about the pump, this time we are talking about the tank. Then we already have pretty nice hydraulic system. We have the working element, the cylinder. Two videos ago we have the pump and now we have the tank. And then we need the things between. So, tank. Huh? Tank is our oil reservoir. Huh? So if our oil, there must simply be enough oil in it. Two things are bad for a tank. If it's overfilled, so if the oil is running out of the tank because there is too much oil, huh? or if the tank is sucked empty huh? and the pumps or there is getting air into the system. Air in a hydraulic system is always, 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 always bad. <laughs> so, these two things need to be prevented. What size do we use? Yeah? So, we should... There, there are rules of thumb. Yeah? In mobile hydraulics, mobile, mobile hydraulics 1.5 to 2. Yeah? Size of tank. Mobile, 1.5 up to 2 times the pump capacity. So if the pump is pumping out 10 liters per second, the, the tank in a mobile, the mobile tank should be, shall be around 15 or 20. Yeah? Rule of thumb. Yeah? Stationary. three to five times. Hmm? The, the bump flow rate. Hmm? There's always the rule, bigger is no issue. Hmm? Because, you know, we talked about the oil needs time to relax, to cool. That's the main task of the hydraulic tank, cooling and also to get rid of air, to get rid of rubbish or something like this, which is inside, this should be settled down. Yeah? So, if you have place for a bigger tank, you can use a bigger tank. Yeah? But however, you should always, this, this amount of oil needs to be stored somewhere. Yeah? If there is, there is, uh, uh, storage, especially if there is storage or if there are huge telescope cylinders or something like this, yeah, then we really have to take care that our tank is big enough that we do, uh, ca we can take a lot of all the oil in. Yeah? So the maximum filling, maximum filling, is all cylinders in. Yeah? All cylinders are inside, yeah? then they need less oil. Yeah? And the rest of the oil must be in the tank. And all accumulators empty. That's obvious, yeah? All cylinders inside, all accumulators empty, the missing oil there, or the oil not needed there, is in the tank. Yeah? And also, not to forget, maximum operating temperature. If these conditions are met, I have the maximum filling. At the maximum filling, the, the tank should still, there should still be some reserve. <laughs> should not be whew, like, look like an infinity pool. <laughs> there should be some reserve. Yeah? Minimum filling, filling. Right the opposite, yeah? All cylinders out. Yeah? 
all accumulate this field. And minimum operating temperature. Then I have the minimum filling in my tank. And guess what? Even if I have the minimum filling in my tank, my suction line, my return line, all my leakage line and so on, they need still to be under the oil level. Yeah? Simply to prevent that we can suck air. Yeah? That's it. Of course, the things I said previously in a previous video about the tank that you should place the, the suction line and the return and everything almost to the ground but not to the ground yeah? because then we would suck in maybe some dirt which will there or water or whatever. We have to cut the pipes at 45 degree angle yeah? so that we can easily suck. We have to place the suction line and the return line as far as possible separated from each other. If we have a bigger tank, we can use some, some, some sheet metal parts inside so that, that the way is long simply. Schwalblech. Uh, these are things. Huh? General rules. Huh? So, Maximum filling, minimum filling, we have covered. This, this oil level in the tank is then changing. Should always be possible to suck in oil. Should always the oil this should simply not be filled to to the top. Yeah? And then there is also, since the level is changing, there is also the need of ventilation. Yeah? And there we simply also take the pump, yeah? maximum amount of pump sucking out. Yeah? This needs to be replaced by air. This, this is how you select the filter. Air filter, recording pump. Air filter. Recording pump flow. It cannot get worse, right? The pump is sucking out the maximum amount it is capable of yeah? and I can never get in enough air, yeah? too much air, but that's it. Yeah? Maybe if you really have an application where you can get back oil pretty fast, you have to look into this and also take care that this is possible. Yeah? Usually in the other direction it's not that big of an issue because then the air does not need to be filtered. In the direction into the tank, the air filter really should filter the air because I do not want to get dust in it. So now we stored the oil and we said we need time to cool the oil. And this is always a topic, especially, especially at working elements which do work all the time. Yeah? Things like cylinders and so on, you know, they, they only work once in a while, let's call it, yeah? not all the time. Yeah? So there is less issue. If you have working elements like hydro motors or something like this, which do work all the time, then usually you need cooling. Yeah? You, usually you need cooling for sure, whatever the sentence means. So sometimes it's not sure, uh, but then it's very likely. Let's call it very likely. If you have uh, working elements which are operating all the time, it's very, very likely that you need additional cooling. Yeah? Or you need a huge, huge, huge tank and nobody will pay. So uh, also, you know, there's a lot of experience inside. So uh, a, a tank with uh, 100 liters usually can get rid of around uh, 75, 7, 700, 750 watts yeah? and a temperature difference of 30 degree. Yeah? So it's not that much you see. Yeah? Uh, if you have an application 
Uh, if you have an application where you run into troubles, uh, where the oil is getting too hot, simply. Uh, you can, and you, you have to add an additional cooler, you have to dimension this cooler. Uh. If you're facing a situation like this, you can do a little calculation, a little bit dimensioning of this stuff, yeah? and you could simply operate yeah? and check the time. Yeah? So, one, one example. Let's say we have a, an oil tank of 100 liters. Yeah? That's our oil tank. And we realize in 30 minutes our our operating temperature changes from 20 degree Celsius to 70 degree Celsius. Yeah? So I have a theta temperature of 50 degree Celsius. Okay? And now we need the specification of the, of the oil. Yeah? And our specific oil here has a capacity, a warmth capacity of, uh, so I used simply the same example, 1.88 uh, 5 kilojoule per kilogram and Kelvin, yeah? and we have a density of 0 0.9 kilogram per square cubic per cubic cubic <laughs> decimeter, yeah? 0 0.9 kilogram per liter. So here we can now uh, estimate uh, it's because. You know, it's not exactly 100 liters, there's oil in the system also and so on, so it's an estimation, a good estimation, yeah? best guess. Yeah? So, how many kilograms we have here inside? Yeah? Mass oil is the liters, yeah? 100 liters, multiplied by the density, 0 0.9, and what is left is kilograms, yeah? so we have 90 kilograms of oil there. Yeah? How much how much work energy we put in? Yeah? Temperature change multiplied by the capacity multiplied by the mass. Yeah? So we have here 50 Kelvin because a delta of 50 degrees Celsius is also a delta of 50 Kelvin multiplied by 1.885 kilojoule per kilogram and Kelvin multiplied by 90 kilogram. Yeah. Kilo, Kelvin goes away, kilogram, kilogram goes away. What is left is, is kilojoule. Yeah. So let's type this in here. See the result. 50 multiplied by 1.885 multiplied by 90. Eight thousand four hundred eighty-two point five kilojoule. Woof. Yeah, eight point five megajoule. I have added here. Yeah. What does this mean? What what power we have? Yeah. So the power. This is the work divided by time. Yeah. So we have eight thousand four hundred eighty-two point five kilojoule. Yeah divided by half an hour, these are 1800 seconds, yeah? so divided by 1800, 4.71 kilowatt. Okay. That's the result of my calculation. This energy needs to be cooled. Yeah? So now I have to select a cooler which can get rid of 4.7 kilowatts yeah? or 5. Yeah. This is how you can, if you have troubles, if you have troubles in a, in a uh, application, yeah? you can select the cooler to get rid of the troubles. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, of course, 
the design of the tank usually is orienting it at the built-in location yeah and uh, well if you can place holes inside yeah and 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 drainage valves and so on this sure helps for cleaning and oil oil changing this is never a bad idea yeah? i've shown you one example of a tank yeah? this is how a stationary tank usually looks like so that's about the tank we have the tank we have the pump we have the valve no we have not the valve we have the tank we have the pump we have the working element in between are the valves and the pipes next time we're going to talk about the pipes so next time we're going to talk about how we select piping proper piping For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.